Fox 61, along with the state's Office of the Arts and Department of Education, have partnered on Connecticut Creative Futures. Our state's full of incredible artistic talent all across a variety of disciplines. And with us now is Austin Skelzo, Connecticut native and professional fiddler player. Thanks for being with us, Austin. Thanks, Erica. Yeah, it's my pleasure. First off, share with our viewers how you got into playing the fiddle. Sure. Well, I learned in public schools how to play violin, classical, you know, in an orchestra setting. And around high school, I was sent by my grandparents to a bunch of summer camps where I learned how to play different styles of music. So I went first to the Kent Litchfield Jazz Camp and learned a little bit about improvisation, and then to Berklee College of Music Summer Camp where I learned about all different styles of kind of fiddled music, Celtic mm -hmm. and Irish and bluegrass and Latin and things like that. That kind of just started this journey that I've been on for the past 10 years or so, mm -hmm. exploring it more in college over the summers and at different sorts of retreats and immersion experiences. And I stepped into it professionally just over two years ago now. I stepped down from a public school teaching job to perform the music and teach the music full time. Right. Talk a little bit more about that because that's really grown here in Connecticut since you started it. Yeah. Well, I was teaching public school and the Darien Public Schools. I was an orchestra teacher at the time playing the music and a few years in I started, I connected with a, a mentor who taught me how to organize a class around teaching people who play banjo and guitar and mm -hmm. mandolin and, and, and fiddle and all these instruments that I didn't interact with all the time and orchestra taught me how to teach that. So I taught a class on Saturday mornings at, in Bethel at a local restaurant and it was received so well and uh, you know, the result of that was all those, those mostly adult students got together on their own and started making music at a local pub, you know, after the mm -hmm. class. I just realized, you know, how impactful that work w was in just such a short amount of time. And so I decided uh, just a year later, as I thought about it through the pandemic, you know, what would it look like to kind of combine this, this passion I've had for performing the music with this, you know, background in education and this love for education and community that I've built. And so that kind of transition happened as I thought about it a little bit more during COVID and as I got picked up by uh, another band that I started performing with, I sort of transitioned out of that and, and focused my work around both performing and teaching the music. And that sort of transitioned to the Podunk Bluegrass Festival, yeah. right? Yeah, that was one of the first bluegrass festivals I ever attended. I went to yeah. Gray Fox first, which is a really well-known uh, big festival in, uh, in New York, and then Podunk, I believe, was my second festival. That's kind of Connecticut's famous bluegrass festival, and it happens in usually the second week of August. Mm -hmm. It's a festival that my band has performed at many, or I've performed in a few bands actually there over the years, and my band On the Trail, which I see on the on the screen here yeah. now, will be performing there. We're, we're actually headlining this year, or we're, we're performing uh, as a main stage act, I should say. And uh, we're really excited to get back to that festival. I, I love it dearly. And what is it your band called? This one we're seeing band. right here is a quartet of all Western Connecticut State University alumni. Mm -hmm. We all, many of us met in college. The bass player was a, actually the band teacher while I was the orchestra teacher. That's how I met him. And that, that band is called On the Trail. We're recording an album right now actually in Bethany at Ace Tone Productions. And that's uh, one of the two bands I play in. This one's a little bit more progressive. Uh, in terms of the type of music that they play. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, as a celebrity, um, Steve Martin plays the banjo. Has that sort of helped with its popularity and at least had people sort of open their eyes to it and maybe open their ears to it, do you think? Well, yeah, it's funny you mentioned Steve Martin. The other band I play in, the Rock Hearts, the banjo player, uh, had the opportunity to play for Steve and hear his banjo playing, and they geeked out about all sorts of banjo yeah. things. And, and so, yeah, I, I will say that the the movement we have around bluegrass and country music, we're in a really exciting moment. I mean, mm -hmm. we just, my friends were just sharing with me yesterday, you know, Beyonce just released these two songs yeah. that, you know, have banjo in them. The songs, right. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of movement around, you know, just a reemergence of folk music, of acoustic mm -hmm. sounds, mm -hmm. of country music, the mandolin and the banjo, and acoustic guitar and fiddle kind of returning to popular music. So I think it's a really exciting time. We've had artists like Billy Strings and, and Molly Tuttle, you know, on national television representing the, the, the music. I think it's a really exciting time and it's also great for getting new people in the fold. I've seen more young people come out to the jams and, and classes that I host too. Yeah, so absolutely. It's great. it's great to see that too. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thanks so much for being with us. We do appreciate your time. 
Sure. Thanks yeah, for thanks, sharing Erica. it with us. Yeah.